Hello everybody and welcome to episode 17 of Glory Hunter with Inter Milan. Welcome to season 2 in Italy. Welcome to the summer of change. After last season's triumphs, we have ripped it up and we have started again pretty much from scratch. We have bought in a lot of players. A lot of players have gone. It's going to be a jam-packed episode today. So let's get into those players who have departed the scene this summer. And it has been a record-breaking summer. £505 million we have spent on near enough a new team. Pretty much. We have let go some very big names. We will start with Edouard Mendy. He has joined al Kazin in Saudi Arabia. Leicester didn't survive relegation, so that clause didn't happen. Denzel Dumfries has joined Newcastle for £20 million. Taylor Booth has joined Arsenal for £33 million. Asante has joined Porto for £41 million. Benjamin Pavard has joined al Had for £60 million. And Federico DeMarco has joined al He'll howl for 77. The biggest one, though, Lataro Martinez has gone to Barcelona for £80 million. Pounds. It's a big one, that one. It was one that I ummed and ahed about for about half an hour and went, no, do you know what? Let's just do it. Let's pull the Band-Aid off. He was injured a little bit last season. He didn't score a lot of goals for us. But we have bought in plenty of players to replace those that have gone. Lots of free transfers to start with. And then we start getting into the big money. Let's take a look at who's come in. And we start by something I teased in the last episode that Lucas Suic would be signing for us permanently. That has been done. £70 million in the door. Had a tremendous second half to last season playing out on that right hand side he really found his own there and hopefully he will do the same second season now we talk about the players who have come in on a free transfer and we start with Adrian Rabiot 32 year old French international centre midfielder class this man very much so obviously he's on the other end of his career now so will be a fringe player. But what we seem to lack last season when things were going wrong, particularly in that Newcastle game, and that's where I've kind of focused my summer activity on, we didn't have somebody who could come on and just control the tiller. Rabiot can do that. He is not alone in the central midfield department in arriving on a free transfer. Hugo Verstelnen has joined us from Club Bruges. Three-star central midfield player. Looks very good on paper. 27 years old. Can only improve from here. Another free transfer and a bargain of a free transfer. This one, Matthias Cunha has joined us from Wolves on a free transfer. Finishing 16, dribbling of 17. This is why I was kind of not worried about letting Lataro Martinez go. We have bought in a couple of other strikers, incidentally, to cover all the bases we need to cover. But yeah. Matthias Cunha looks good on paper. Not got the greatest of scoring records. One in four for Wolves. But hopefully he'll find it a little bit easier in Italy. And the last of the free transfers. We have bought in Andy Robertson from Liverpool. 33 year old now. Again, with the thinking in mind, we needed some stronger personalities. Andy Robertson has got that in abundance. Spent a decade at Liverpool, but has now continued his career in Italy. We hopped across to Lazio to bring in Mads Rovalev at right back. He will be a backup player to another one that has come in. We'll talk about him in a little while. Wan Foyth was an option, but Rovalev was a cheaper version of a probably better player to play at right back. Wan was kind of like, well, I want to play centre back as well. This man just plays down the right hand side. Simple as. We nipped across to Germany to bring in Deo Umpamakano. I finally said his name right. Centre-back, 28 years of age. Again, just an upgrade on what we had at centre-half. There has been a lot go. Ibanez has gone out on loan. 
yeah, it's all sort of happened in the summer where we've just revamped the team and yeah Umpa Bacano very much a part of that 54 million we paid for him bargain we have bought in another goalkeeper we have bought in Guillermo Vicario for Tottenham for a fee of 54 million pounds we'll go right to the first choice picture as a goalkeeper love this guy wanted a goalkeeper that wasn't as old as Mendy but not as young as Karasini and we have found him in Vicario. The numbers, they keep on coming. Sergio Arabas has joined us from Almeria in Spain for £60 million. Can play right across the three behind the striker. Very much an upgrade on Mudrich, who was going to come back for a second season until this man jumped out in front of me and said, look, buy me. I want to be here. So, yeah. I mean... We are frightening at the front of the pitch now with the amount of options we've got. But we're not looking too shabby at the back as well. Sebastian Bosselli has joined us from Porto for the small fee of £45 million. Can play right across the back four, predominantly a centre-back, maybe a right-back as well. 23 years of age. He has got so much time left in his career. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do. Now we talk about the big right back signing, and that is Urian Timber. He has joined us from Brentford for £67 million. Another big price tag on this man, but he is so good. And I mean, so, so good. Why it didn't work out at Arsenal, I have got no idea. Perhaps injuries took their toll like they might do in real life. 26 years of age, he has got bags of time left. And yeah. A very much an upgrade on Benjamin Pavard. Now we move into the striking department once more. And we have bought in Diego Jota from Liverpool for a fee of £71 million. Now I know what you're thinking. Why on earth have I paid £71 million for a 30-year-old Portuguese international? Because he is so good. He has already contributed... He kind of made my mind up about letting Letaro Martinez move on. Again, probably a one in four record with Liverpool. But he adds so much more than goals. As he can play on the left, he can play on the right, he can play behind the striker. And he can be the striker himself. But yeah, looking forward to seeing what Diego can do in Italy. We have bought in another striker though in Francesco P. Espetito. He has joined us from Real Madrid. Now we did sell him. To Real Madrid back in 2025 so we had a buyback clause or a, a, a monetary clause within the contract which means we saved 10 million pounds on the 67 we spent on bringing him in 22 years of age he looks like he is going to be very very good 11 goals in Real Madrid's team over two seasons three star can play as the advanced forward as well I mean it was a no-brainer and he's homegrown as well. Just two more to come and we start with Ryan Gravenberg. He has joined us from Liverpool on loan with an option to buy for £12 million at the end. 25-year-old Dutch international. The legs in midfield. This is what I'm going to call him because this is what he is going to do. When the older guys tire, Barella, Rabio, people like that, Gravenberg can come on and just complete the game for us. Will he change a game? Probably not. He will be a very good squad player, though. And last, but by no means least, we have bought in Nico Schottlenbeck from Borussia Dortmund for £81 million. The release clause was met. We had money sitting in our pockets, burning a hole. So bought in this man four and a half star defender will be the linchpin at the back we conceded 22 goals last season in Serie A we are going to concede probably a few less with this man in the middle so so far this summer we have a net spend of 211 million pounds with 12 in and nine out and yeah 
It's been an absolute transformation of the squad that started with me last season. I mean, look how many of them are in the media dream 11, including the likes of Henrik as well. So we are the favourites to win the title for a fourth time in succession. Milan are at 4-1. to one. They are going to be our biggest challengers as well, probably. Napoli at 9-1. to one. Juventus at 10. Lazio at 20. Roma at 25. With Fiorentina and Atalanta at 33-1. to one. Santa Laurentina have come back up. As have Pisa. As have Frosino. They are back in Serie A this season. And we start next time around with our first game of the season to take on Oliver Glasner's Atalanta. Now, he's taken over from Gasparini in the summer, so he will be finding his feet. I'm not sure what we're going to do this year. We might just focus more on the Champions League rather than Serie A because we've done that one. The Champions League is the reason we are still here. It is the reason we have done what we've done this summer and brought in some real quality from back to front. I've never seen a summer like it and I dare say you have too. So join me next time for that first game of the season away at Atalanta and see how we begin. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I will see you next time. Goodbye.